So America decided to play the trump card. Welcome to Trump land. The end of outrage culture may have just begun. Quit calling people racist. Quit calling people sexist and listen to what they have to say and why they are saying it. We spend too much time labeling people. Too much time thinking that a label describes the problem or describes what's going on. It doesn't. Sometimes a label can be misidentified. Sometimes a label is artificial and is concocted. So, there's a large body of people in the United States that are tired of this process. Tired of being labeled. So much so, was there social backlash? Meaning that people said, okay, I don't have to tell you who I'm going to vote for. I can simply vote. And then I can get the president that I want. Apparently, there was maybe some of that going on. Because some people got in a lot of trouble because they supported Trump publicly. Well... Maybe if you would have listened to them and talked to them instead of calling them racist, calling them misogynist, then maybe you could have talked them out of voting for Trump. But since you showed intolerance to them, they shut up. And so instead of talking about it, they pushed the button. And they said, look, now you have to deal with him. Many people probably didn't even like the man. They voted for him anyways because they really hated what Hillary Clinton represented. They hated outrage culture. They hated being labeled. So, who do we get? You get Donald Trump. And let's see what happens now. This is a condemnation of the media. This is a condemnation of the government. Label factions. 4.30 in the morning on the 11th of November. And I'm thinking, I'm not upset. I'm proud of the American people that said, fuck you to political correctness. Because no matter how you look at it, and I have listened to Sam Harris, and I wasn't angry at him, Sam Harris. I didn't say, Sam, you're wrong. But I realized that his understanding of the situation is based upon an elitist training. Now, people don't like it when I call him an elitist, but he is. He's an elitist. It's, not, it's okay to be an elitist. It's okay. If you're an elite athlete, you're an elite athlete. You're an elitist. If you're, you're good, if you're at the top of the game, if you're intelligent like that, you're an elitist. You're a very rare person. You're someone that is sought after. You are articulate. You've achieved. There's nothing wrong with being an elitist. But it does give you perspective of the world that isn't quite right. And the strategic advantage of electing Trump has a lot of advantages in that there's a recirculation of people. There's a re-meshing of people. And from a perspective of control theory, and I know people say, you're a dumb fuck for using that term, control theory. But if you think about control theory carefully, and you understand it from an intuitive level, you'll realize it's not a bad move to make. I know he's everything you say he is. But change in this situation, there was 
it was necessary to throw a hand grenade into Congress, into the executive branch. It's necessary to shake things up. It's a change is a good thing for for the sake of change. For the sake of change, you have to move. And the relationship with Russia, in some ways, we've got to deal with Putin. You know, and and I think Trump is actually going to deal with that situation in a more simplified way. And some of these issues need to be dealt with in a more simplified way. And the political correctness is strangling us. We are choking on it. Now, Trump can't claim political correctness. We can call him crap and we won't get shit for it. So there's, there, in a sense, we were given a sense of freedom. Hillary, the history-making event, she used it. And that's why America didn't vote for her. Not because she's a woman, but because... For a cunt. Cunt, 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 cunt. Well, there's more than Trump did. Here, the billionaire that could have afforded it spent half a billion dollars less than Hillary. He used the system against itself. And that was a demonstration of how insidious our incestuous our media has become, how backwards. And it's, it's the wake up call of social media. It's the awakening of a new monster. And it is a monster. There's no direct question that social media will be a monster. And we've demonstrated that monster. Worldwide monster, worldwide attention was put on this election. People from all over the world had an influence on what happened in the United States. They campaigned in the UK, in Canada. Strong campaigners campaigning for their chosen election. They had an interest to see what outcome we would get. And they played a part in the outcome. We had a global conversation about this election. We had a global conversation about where we wanted to go in the world. And in a way, we voted the conscience of a lot of the world. But only Americans were allowed to make the final decision. And some Americans abstained. 49% of them abstained from the election. Doesn't mean they don't care. But they did not feel strong enough to vote either way. They would let the will of the people, the rest of the people, make that decision. Don't get angry at people when they don't vote. That doesn't mean they don't care. This idea that, well, they're not involved. They could be very involved, but they simply do not want to make that final decision. They'll let those that feel the strongest about it make that decision. None of the above is a vote. So I do feel invigorated by a change. It's unexpected. I don't know the future. It may be horrible. Maybe we will get in a war. Maybe all the worst possible things will happen. But it's not over until it's over. We don't know the future. We don't know. He's a, he's a wild card. He is a trump card. And he's wild in so many different ways. The person that is president, we are overvaluing the presidency. And if there's any one thing that I think we can learn from this, is it's not that important. Choose the best person for the job. Let's understand this job a little better. Because we'll get a chance, I hope, to see what an unqualified person does in office. I mean, I think it's good. We need a change. Back to control theory. Let's throw a little randomness into the system. Randomness is good. What's good is bad for you. What is bad is good for you. Yes, what is bad is good for you. Think of him as a little radioactivity. A little radioactivity helps the immune system. 
one reason one of the studies they did about radioactivity was they found that some people that got low doses of radiation were actually healthier than those people that got no dosage of radiation or beyond this what was considered the threshold so what is bad can be good for you exercise breaks down the body but that breaking down of the body helps build it back up it's not bad it can be a very good thing and i want to encourage people to look at the good not in the bad and i just from a whole it it forces you to become engaged it forces you not to be complacent so riot in the streets if you feel like well don't riot protest in the streets if you feel strongly get engaged well, however you feel it's okay to protest in the streets we're going to make fun of you but i'm glad you feel compelled but now don't stop at the protests in the street let's have a conversation and in a way this forces you to have a conversation the people that were unwilling to have a conversation had hillary won that part of the conversation would feel empowered and they would feel legitimized they would feel their their safe spaces were a good idea they would feel that their patriarchy theory was correct we are progressing but we also have a tendency to create mountains out of molehills sticks and stones will break my bones words will never hurt me these are words to live by now i know words can have an impact on your life and they are important and i think we should learn how to use our words as effectively as absolutely possible but we need to understand the intent behind words we need to understand the difference between emotions and ideas if someone is being emotional they're being emotional and it's okay to say that's just emotional don't condemn someone for calling someone a cunt, a nigger. Don't, they're not racist. We need to know the context of how they said that. They might not have say it in the way that you would have said it. You might have a better way of saying it. And that might be the better way of saying it. The more accurate way of saying it. We shouldn't, because you're a woman, because you're a man. We shouldn't blame things on people's genders. But we also shouldn't be naive and look at the dimorphism of people and say, oh, that has nothing to do with anything. It has everything to do with a lot of things. What it actually has to do with depends on the individual. Look at the individual. Don't look at the sex. Don't look at the race. Look at the individual. And when you start playing identity politics, you're going to elect a Trump. You don't like Trump? Well, don't play identity politics and you won't get a Trump. That's what the American people are saying. Look, stop playing fucking games. Quit calling me a racist. Quit calling me a sexist. Quit being a cunt. And I mean that generically for men and women. A man can be a cunt too. So don't take it as a sexist. Don't be a sexist when someone calls you a cunt. They don't mean it in a way that you might feel it's derogatory. Cathartic. That's the word. Cathartic. Failure is okay. Failure is an option. We should feel empowered. We should feel emboldened. Four years of change. Four years of a new examination of the political system. Four years of understanding what happened, why it happened. Four years of talking about the issues. Where are we going to go? Where are our lines going to be drawn? Who's most deserving? Who's most right? These are the questions that plague the night.